Rita, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hello, Hello Rita. Hi. Hello. So I've titled mine um, Natural Agriculture on an Urban Allotment. So this is very small scale compared to Marcus and Manuela. And Makichi Okada, who started and developed natural agriculture, thought about the principles of it, but naturally um, the difference in environment, uh, depending on location, climate, surroundings, and so on, um, makes it um, difficult to apply one principle for all. So we all have to look into what could be done in different country, different climates, etc. So by listening to presentations today, from uh, four participants, we hope that people will learn more about the essence of practice of natural agriculture. Um, so my name is Breda McNamara and I live in Graven Hill in Oxfordshire. I moved here in August 2019 from North East London to a self-build. And uh, I work in London part-time as a nurse in a doctor's surgery. So I've more time to, to follow my hobbies and interests and they include gardening. And I've always been interested in health and healthy eating and trying to influence others as well with healthy um, lifestyle and eating. I also practice meditation and I do lots of arts and crafts. I grew up in Ireland um, in a dairy farm and we grew most of our own produce. And I also had um, an allotment when I lived in London um, but I'm still learning and, and I do believe that nature teaches, teaches us everything if we listen and observe. And I've also visited Yatesbury and I was very impressed and I just felt that this is how I want to practice my own, growing my own produce. So for those of you who are not too sure whereabouts Oxfordshire in relation to the rest of England, it's it's a landlocked county. It's still only 60 miles from London or thereabouts. And um, um, it, it's actually, the climate is a bit different to London, even though it's not very far away. So what, we, um, what surprised me was um, how much later we can get frosts. And um, just a little bit about the principles of natural agriculture from, from my understanding of it. Um, it's about having respect for nature and continuous cropping versus crop rotation. So I grew up thinking that crop rotation was the way to practice growing your vegetables. In fact, there seems to be an awful lot of evidence for growing the same uh, plants in the same place year on year. Um, not using insecticides, even organic ones, and not using fertilizer or manure, and using rainwater if possible. So um, I got allocated an allotment to my surprise within a couple of weeks of applying for it. And um, that was just over a year ago now, and it was very overgrown. The council strimmed it for me and the rest was up to me really. So it measures 44 meters by seven. So it's quite sizable for one person. And I pay 44 pounds a year to the council, which is, it's just peanuts really. Um, my two friends and neighbors, they're a couple, they help me as they like gardening, but they don't really want the responsibility of an allotment. So that's worked well because when I'm at work, they can uh, water, etc. So when I first got the allotment, um, there was a lot of like thick kind of undergrowth, lots of, um, not so much weeds, but sort of lots of strong grasses. And um, it definitely needed to be dug over for the first time. So we didn't really have much of a plan. So we, we spent the whole year just um, clearing it of rubbish, digging the, the whole area. But little bit by little bit, we actually enjoyed the process. It was hard work, but actually it was beautiful to be out there um, throughout the year. 
we were growing vegetables from seeds at home. We all had um, seeds growing in our uh, south facing uh, living room or um, dining room. The whole place was covered in, in seedlings. Um, and, and as we cleared the ground, we then plant, replanted our, our seeds or, or our seedlings, I should say. And we were also given many seedlings from our allotment neighbors and um, Shinya from Yatesbury gave me some. So it was really encouraging that first year to see how much progress we'd made. And it was just, um, as I said, great to be outside, um, getting to know our allotment neighbors. And we actually, when I counted them, we grew well over 30 different types of fruit and vegetables last year. Some of them were actually, um, were already there. So we had a pear tree and um, a plum tree. We had some raspberries. I discovered um, some asparagus, which is a lovely find. And we had um, lots of um, uh, rosemary and sage, which I had to cut back because it was growing um, completely wild. So the challenges, the challenges are interesting because they didn't really um, affect very much um, what our success was at the end of the day. Yes, the, the, the soil is heavy clay. It's um, quite um, sticky. It tends to flood and it actually doesn't retain the moisture very well. So that in itself is a bit of a challenge, but I was actually pleasantly surprised when we started digging how much um, life there was under the soil, lots of worms. And, um, you know, it was actually looking a lot better than I thought. The drought, it was a definitely a dry summer. So it would take us an hour, to an hour and a half to actually water everything every day. Um, the wind was um, another problem. It's been very windy weather over the last couple of years and a lot of the, the, the structures that we had up to grow our beans, they, they kind of keeled over a bit, but we didn't really lose much produce, but it was getting, getting very untidy for a while. So we're going to try using wigwam structures this year. And as I said, you know, the frost took us by surprise because it was later than I had ever experienced. Probably the be beginning of May, we had a frost. So I've actually bought some frost fleece for this year. I put weeds in here as a challenge. In fact, like uh, Marcus and um, Manuela, the weeds are not really an issue for me. I did get rid of the tall weeds or anything that was suffocating the smaller plants. But actually, it actually proved to be a bonus having a little bit of ground weed because it helped to maintain some of the, the moisture. Um, and um, it was easier at work, not, not worrying too much about weeds. We had thousands of aphids on our beans, and but luckily we had hundreds of ladybirds as well. So I, I didn't feel, yes, we had a few sacrificed um, plants, but actually it didn't affect overall the, our, our produce. The birds were a pleasure to look at, and I was quite enjoying looking at them, but they were a little challenge because once our back was turned, they started plucking out the newly planted brassicas. So I came back with some foil trays and put them on poles and they were flapping about in the, in the breeze. And that seemed to keep the birds away from, from the brassicas and it worked well. The cabbage butterfly was, um, was a big problem initially. And uh, luckily I was tipped off by a, um, an allotment neighbor. And I just got um, a glove and I started wiping away all the eggs as I was going down to water each day, I would just take away the excess eggs and uh, uh, it didn't seem to be um, um, a big issue at the end of the day. And I've, it was too late in the season to actually find any fine netting and uh, but I have since bought some and um, 
I'm going to use those this year. One of the challenges that um, I faced is, is actually advice from others. Um, and that includes my friends who I'm sharing the allotment with. They are hell bent on actually putting some manure on the allotment because they said it needs something. They want to get some mushroom compost, which I know contains manure. And at the moment, I don't feel that it needs it. And um, so we've compromised. And what we've decided to do was actually do a little uh, test on, they're going to actually have their own little patch this year. And um, I'm afraid I have to respect their, their wishes and they're going to do what they will do on their patch. So this is the allotment um, as it is today. So um, I've actually haven't been, there is quite a few weeds on there because um, things haven't really grown over the winter. Um, we have still got lots of produce. I've got kale, I've got chard, um, some sweet, and this is just what I picked last weekend, um, just for, for my use over the weekend. So I've got um, Jerusalem artichokes, some carrots, some kale, chard, and kaylets, which are a hybrid of kale and Brussels sprouts, and some Fodacious that I grew from seed that I bought at the Shume Center, and they did really well this year. So my plan for this year is to, um, to organize my seeds, and I've actually done an awful lot of seed saving. So I've actually got a little box and uh, divided, and you can't see here, but it's, it's kind of divided into the months of growth. And... Uh, so, and I'm also going to keep a diary because I think it is important to write down what works and what doesn't because it's difficult to remember from one year to the next. I'm also going to try and practice continuous cropping. So from this year, I'm going to just do meter squares uh, because I want to increase the amount of produce, or, or sorry, the variety of produce that, um, that, I do, that I grow. I've also uh, got some whiskey barrels that I'm going to move down to the allotment to collect some rainwater because it will make the job of watering a little bit easier. It's, um, it's worth a try. Um, I actually grew a lot of bee-friendly wildflowers uh, as well this year and or last year and it actually might have impacted on how well the, the fruit trees that were already existing there did. And actually, people commented that um, they'd never seen pears on the pear tree before. So maybe the wildflowers that were beside the pear tree did their job. They attracted the bees who did the pollination for us. So um, I'm hoping that over time I can influence um, those around me, my experienced gardening allotment neighbours, to consider aspects of natural agriculture. And meanwhile, I, I'm going to continue gardening, uh, gardening uh, intuitively because I feel that I think once you get the, the gist of, of natural agriculture, that as long as you observe what's going on in nature, that you can't really go wrong. So that's my, my presentation. Thank you very much, Rita. Let's uh, have a look at some uh, questions and answers regarding your story. Uh, 300 square meters is quite a sizable allotment. So well yes, done. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look if we have uh, some questions and answers. Can you see it from your side, Rita? What I tend to do is actually, what I, I think is correct anyway, is to maybe remove the excess and just accept that you'll get a certain amount of, of insects um, anyway. And 
my also my understanding is that it, with each year, if you are saving seeds and growing plants from that seed, they will get stronger, and so they tend to to withstand or maybe not attract the insects so much. So it's, I, I just remove the excess. Actually, what I did was to make it look pretty, I, I actually made a large raised bed across the front of the, um, the allotment. So it's actually near the fruit trees. Um, but this year, I'm actually going to um, plant little pockets of them throughout the allotment. One more question is in chat, Brida, if you were to. Okay. How do you feel about bringing more sculptural forms to the garden in terms of land art, structures, benches, etc.? <laughs> I'm all for it. I think um, there's no reason why an allotment or a garden, just because you're growing vegetables, need to be um, um, ugly. I think it's beautiful um, to, to actually have pretty things around you and that is actually part of my plan. I'm actually in the process of making a nice bench for my allotment out of um, recycled pallet wood. So a great idea. So the, someone's asked about what kind of flowers am I planting for the bees. I've actually um, uh, bought packets of wildflower seeds. So they're a big mixture of things. Okay, I think that would be it so far for Brida. And what a lovely image to uh, finish the first part of the conference with, uh, the flowers.